Hello everyone and welcome to another X-Plane 11 tutorial. I've been going through some of my former videos to make sure that they're still relevant and the one topping the charts with questions is the Cessna 172 autopilot tutorial. The reason for questions like where's my autopilot button and how do I turn this thing off is very relevant because a recent update to X-Plane, specifically 11.30, upgraded the autopilot in the Cessna 172 to an STEC 55 and that particular version of the autopilot works much differently than the previous version in that video. So today's lesson will go over the STEC 55, the good, bad and ugly and what you need to know. So let's get started. All right, the first thing we're going to do is configure two buttons on our joystick. The reason for that is if you look at the autopilot, there is no longer an autopilot toggle, so the AP button is gone. And that used to be the button that you would press to turn on or off the autopilot. So we're going to want to have a button on our joystick for that. The other thing is there's a feature on the STEC 55 called Control Wheel Steering Mode, and I'll explain what that is later. And again, there is no button for that either. So we will need to configure two joystick buttons for those features. So let's go ahead up to the top right, select our joystick tab, and your default device will be displayed. If that's not the right one, you can go in the drop down menu and choose the one you prefer. And we're going to identify two particular buttons for each of these features. So button eight for me on the CH Eclipse yoke is going to be control wheel steering mode and button 9 will be disconnect Severos, whichever side is active. And what this one will do is disconnect the autopilot, whatever side is active. So if you're flying a Boeing 737 or a Cessna, it doesn't matter whether it's Command A, B, or just the AP button, this button will make sure that the autopilot is disconnected. So choose your joystick, choose which buttons that you would prefer, and set one button to control wheel steering mode and the other button to disco servos, whichever side is active. Hit pause on the video and take whatever time you need and then jump back into the lesson when you're ready to get started. All right, now that you had a chance to configure your joysticks, we're gonna look at a pre-flight checklist for the autopilot. We'll zoom in here on the autopilot and we see that the STEC like autopilot says it's RDY for ready. If there was a failure with the autopilot itself or the turn based coordinator right here, it would not say ready, but it would say fail about two inches to the right of that. So the fact that it's saying ready means we have no failures to worry about. Pre flight check number one complete. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to activate heading mode and we notice that automatically our yokes have switched to whatever direction the heading bug is configured to. So if we go over here to the heading bug and we go to say 240 and let go, we notice the yokes turn left. And if we go back over here to 060 and let go, the yokes turn right. The other thing we'll wanna check is by putting our hands on the joystick that we can move it left and right and oversteer. So you never know when you need to auto-correct the autopilot and that is also working correctly. So the very next thing we're gonna do is disconnect the autopilot. And again, there's two ways to do that. You can press this red button here on the oak. And we hear that sound. That's the sound of the autopilot disconnecting. And we see the yokes resetting back to normal. The other way to disconnect reactivate the autopilot and we press the button on our joystick and the exact same thing occurs pre-flight check number two has been complete let's reactivate the heading bug and now we'll activate the vertical speed mode and we notice that the yokes just got pushed in and the trim wheel is now activated if I increase the vertical speed say to plus two we notice that the yoke is being pulled out and if i decrease the vertical speed to say minus two we should start seeing the yoke come back in 
The other thing to note is that if you have a trim wheel on your on your joystick, which I happen to, and I start to use the trim wheel manually, it will also disconnect the autopilot as well. So again, let's go back, activate heading mode, and then vertical speed mode. And I'll want to just make sure that I can also oversteer with the pitch by pushing in and pulling out on the yoke. So again, you can disconnect the autopilot by using this trim wheel, whether it's manually or with your mouse, or again, pressing the disconnect button on the joystick. Those are primarily the checks that we'll want to do before we take off, and we've done that. Um, the other thing I want to mention to you is that the autopilot totally ignores your altimeter. So this is your altimeter here, and it's set to 2, 9 or 9 or 2, which is the default altimeter. And if I was to adjust it here like this, it has no bearing whatsoever on the autopilot. The autopilot has sensors in the back of the plane, and it uses those to determine what the altitude is. It has no indication of what this particular bug is, so you can adjust it for your own needs, but it not working or you adjusting it will not impact whatsoever the autopilot. All right, let's get in the air and I'll show you how this new STEC 55 works. So the first thing we're going to do is set the heading bug to the direction of the runway, which is 320. So we'll turn it counterclockwise until we get to 320. And we'll go ahead and take off. We've reached 60 knots, so we'll pull back slightly on the yoke. There we go. So in order to maintain the heading of 320, which is our runway, we can go over to the autopilot and activate the heading bug. Now, as you can see, the yokes are moving and the heading bug is starting to line up and the plane will automatically maintain that heading of 320. The altitude is still increasing, and you can see my vertical speed here, but this has nothing to do with the autopilot. It's simply based on the speed on power of the aircraft. So if I was to increase the speed, I'll go higher, and if I decrease the speed, I'll go lower. So what we'll do is we'll zoom out a little bit so you can see, and we're gonna wait till the altitude gets to around 1500 here. So we're almost there. And what we're going to do when we get to 1500, we're going to press this altitude hold button like so. So now the plane will level off. You can see the vertical speed here go to zero. And we're maintaining around the 1500 mark that I've pressed. So these are the two basic and most used modes of the STEC 55. Heading mode sets the aircraft heading to the direction of the heading bug, and I can change it. So for example, if I wanted to change the heading to 060, I can change the heading bug over here to 060. And now the aircraft will start to turn towards 060. So you could operate the plane in this mode where if you know where you're going, you just keep turning the heading bug and the autopilot will maintain those headings for you. And again, if you would like to maintain the altitude, you can activate the altitude hold mode, which keeps the altitude at the current altitude that you were at when you press it. The other thing you can do is operate the vertical speed mode. So in the vertical speed mode, I can increase the feet per minute uh, in increments of 100. So this would be 500 feet per minute at a positive rate. So we can see here the vertical speed is at five. So that means I will now increase in altitude at a speed of 500 feet per minute. I can also do the reverse. So if I was to change this into the negative, I'm now decreasing. You can see the vertical speed go to a negative five and I'm going minus 500 feet per minute. So once I get to five for 1500 feet, I can select altitude hold. 
There we go. And it'll take my plane a second or two to level off. Now the other thing I'm going to show you is that the autopilot is quite dumb. So you can see here I'm going way too fast for a Cessna. So let's say I cut back the speed a little bit by lowering the throttle down. And let's say I'll bring the RPMs around 2,000. If I go and activate vertical speed mode and put it to say like 10, I'm now saying I would like to go at 1,000 feet per minute in a positive rate. Look at my speed decreasing. The autopilot has no idea whether or not I have the power to actually meet what I'm asking it to do, but it's going to attempt to do it. So if I was to keep letting that go, I would actually stall. So the point I'm trying to make here is that you have to be aware that when you're in a vertical speedboat or in an altitude hold, you have to be aware of what you've asked the aircraft to do. It has no brain, so it doesn't know whether or not the plane is going to stall or not from your action. So just because you said go up or go down or go left or go right, um, you also have to pay attention to the airspeed and power indication to make sure that you're able to achieve those goals that you're asking the autopilot to do. So I've reactivated the altitude uh, hold button and you notice that I'm at around 1800 feet. While you're in altitude hold mode, you can also make minor adjustments to your altitude in increments of 20 feet. So let's say I would like to go from 1800 feet to 1900 feet. If I was to turn this wheel clockwise five times, so two, four, six, eight, ten for 100 feet, you'll see I will now go to approximately 1900 feet. So again, you can make minor adjustments while you're in altitude hold mode by using the vertical speed knob in a positive or negative way, and you'll make slight adjustments in increments of 20 feet. So again, if I want to go to 2000 feet, let's uh, let's do it six times. So it looks like I'm just slightly behind the uh, the nine there. So one, two, three, four, five, six an adjustment of 120 feet and you'll see now I am going to 2,000 feet so we have shown you heading mode and we showed you altitude hold mode and we showed you vertical speed mode the next thing that I'm going to show you is called control wheel steering mode and you'll look at this autopilot and go, I don't see any button for control wheel steering mode. And that's because there's none. So control wheel steering mode requires you to have configured a joystick button as we did at the start of this video. So if you hold in the button for control wheel steering mode, which is what you said earlier, you can make any adjustments that you would like to the aircraft. So you can pitch up or pitch down, you can turn left or turn right, and the aircraft will maintain that pressure that you have applied. So here I am flying, and I would like to make a, a right-hand turn. So I'm gonna go ahead and hold the control wheel steering mode button in, and then let go. So now I can see over here that I have control wheel steering mode activated. The aircraft is now gonna make this right-hand turn continuously until I basically either disconnect the autopilot or change my control wheel steering mode to a new mode. So this is a great mode that if you're flying by hand and you want the feel of the oak, at any time you want to level off or make an adjustment, rather than have to change the heading bug or play with the vertical speed, you can simply use control wheel steering mode. So let's do it again. So I'm going to hold control wheel steering mode, level back off, okay, and let's go and pitch down a little bit. So I'm going to pitch down, say, 500 feet per minute. So we'll just keep holding it in. There we go. Let go. So now I let go. I'm straight and I'm now going at a vertical speed of minus five in control wheel steering mode. So that's another mode of the aircraft. Again, you need to configure a joystick button for that to work. Um, there's no button on the autopilot for that. And that's called control wheel steering mode. So it's a way for you to put a positive or negative pressure on the yoke, whether you're steering left or right, or whether you're going pitch up or pitch down, holding in the button, 
making your adjustment and then letting go, the aircraft will fly that. So one last time, hold in control wheel steering mode button. I'm now going to adjust the aircraft to be zero for a vertical speed, let go, and now I'm flying at a nice, perfect pitch. I'm not going up, I'm not going down. It's almost the same as if I was to go over here to altitude hold. One of the negatives of this autopilot is that you can't be in a pitch mode, so altitude or vertical speed, unless you're in a roll mode. So you have to be in either heading or nav mode in order to be at a level flight or increase or decrease your vertical speed. The way around that is to activate control wheel steering mode, so hold the button in, level off to the, you know, wherever you would like to be, or make a turn or go up or down, let go of the control wheel steering mode, and then you can activate your pitch mode for your altitude or vertical speed. So it's a way around, essentially, uh, that limitation. Okay, so now the next thing I'll show you is how to follow a VOR. So um, VORs, NDBs, they're basically radio beacons that, that let you navigate, and these were pre-GPS. So if I press M on the map, I can see that there's a VOR here for YOW, and if I click it, I can see that it's set to 114.60. And I'm going to tune to 114.60 by clicking on Tune Nav 1 to that. So I can see now my Nav 1 is set to 114.60. If we zoom in, I'm currently in Nav mode, so I'm following the radio. Now we can go over to the GPS. We can activate nav mode. So what we're going to do, we're going to go over here to this course deviation indicator or CDI. We're going to change this wheel. So I can see I'm going from it. I want to be going to it. So I'm going to keep turning it. Now it says two. And I'm going to keep turning it until the line lines up on the center. There we go. So that means I need to turn the heading bug to 300, almost 300. So let's go ahead and turn the heading bug to 300. There we go. And now automatically the autopilot will take me to that particular radio beacon. Now if I had a plane that had a horizontal situation indicator, I wouldn't have to use the heading bug, it would just automatically know where I need to go, so activating the nav mode would just take me there. But the Cessna 172 does not have a HSI, so I have to manually do that. So again, if I look at the map, slowly turning around and making my way to the VOR which in this case happens to be YOW for Ottawa. And we'll just wait a few seconds here for it to hit the 300 radial. There we go. So again, if I was to wait long enough, I would end up tracking this radial all the way to the center of this VOR. The other option for navigation is GPS. So. The Garmin 530 is in the Cessna 172. So if I go over here to the right-hand side and use the far right big knob, press it a couple times, I get the nearest airports that are around. So now if I use the inner knob and I go clockwise, I can see that, oh, I was looking for CARP. Perhaps I missed it here. CYRP, there we go, CARP. It's about 30 nautical miles away. So if I go and click the waypoint button for direct to and activate it, I now have a magenta line taking me there. So again, I have nav mode activated and I'm gonna go up here and switch to GPS. So now my course deviation indicator here is going to line up with the GPS. The con to it though, is that this particular aircraft in this mode is going to only make very small sudden movements to get to this particular track. So let's say I had four or five different waypoints. Over time, I'm going to drift off course to where I want to go. 
So normally how I would adjust that is I would see, okay, right now I need to get there on a track of uh, 282. So I would go ahead and adjust my heading bug here, say to 282, and I would keep adjusting this as required. Well, that gets kind of annoying. There's a GPS steering mode that's also available on this STEC 55. And if you simply press the nav button again, you can now see it activated GPSS or GPS steering mode. In that mode, I don't have to do a single thing. It will just perfectly follow that magenta line for me. I don't have to use the heading bug. I don't have to do any of those things. So that's my preferred way. So again, not all autopilots have that feature. The Cessna 172 with the upgrade does. So to recap, pressing the nav mode will either track a GPS or a VOR or NDB radio beacon. In order to switch between them, you have to go over here and choose either nav or GPS. And generally you have to use the heading bug to kind of find the right track to get there. Um, if you're using the VOR, you simply, again in this case, make sure that you're on the two. Turn your OBS Omni bearing selector into your compass card lines up at the center and make your heading adjustment. So I got to go to a heading of 300. So I go to my heading bug just for 300 and I'll be following essentially that waypoint. There we go. And I had to take off GPS steering mode. So now I'm now turning towards that particular VOR over here. Again, in GPS mode, I already have the waypoint set up. So I simply zoom in, activate the GPS mode. Typically, I would have to turn the heading to the track that I need to be at, or simply pressing nav one more time, activates it in GPS steering mode, and I can be lazy and my plane will automatically fly the right track, the desired track, following that magenta line. The last thing that I would like to show you is how to fly an ILS approach. We'll select the Cessna Skyhawk, make sure you don't select the G1000. We'll change location to CYOW, Ottawa, in my case, or your favorite airport. We'll customize and we'll do a 10 nautical mile approach. We'll confirm that and then start a new flight. And we'll go ahead and make sure that our aircraft is paused so I can explain what's going on. So the first thing we're going to need to do is find out what the ILS frequency is in our course. So we'll do that by pressing M. And we can see the ILS frequency by clicking on it is 110.30. So we'll tune in to nav 1. And the course is 320. So if we go back into the plane, we can see that the heading bug is already configured to 320. If that was not the case, you would need to adjust this heading bug to the course that um, the ILS frequency says you need to be to. Okay, the other thing is you'll see that I'm below the glide slope. So what that means is that essentially um, the localizer is what controls the left and right or basically lines me up with the runway and the glide slope is what controls the lateral or up and down. Uh, sorry, the vertical or up and down. So essentially, if I want the plane to land itself, I need both a localizer and I need a glide slope. So watch what happens when I unpause the video. I make sure that I'm in nav mode here, not GPS mode. And I go ahead and activate the approach button. So now I can see on the course deviation indicator or CDI here, that I'm lined up center with the localizer. So I'm lined up with the runway. If I would like to actually also activate the glide slope, I have to come over here to Alt, hold, press it once, and then press it a second time. So now I have nav and approach that were automatically activated by me pressing approach. I then press the altitude hold button and press it a second time to activate the glide slope. So now, if we look at the map, we're still a little ways off from the center line, 
but once I fly into this kind of lighter gray area, the line for the localizer and the glide slope will line up like a cross and automatically the plane will start to land for me or take me down to the minimum thresholds. So we'll just wait a second here and we'll start to see things kick off. Alright, anytime now, once we hit that middle section of the line, we can already see the CDI starting to line up here in the line. So we're getting close. There we go, you just see it pitch. So now we've now intercepted the glide slope. You can now see I'm starting to descend here on the center line. And you can see here my altitude is now starting to decrease. So this is how you do an ILS approach. We'll go ahead and take this bird in. So to recap again, first thing I did was go into the map. I selected the ILS approach. I noted the frequency. I could have tuned it in manually to my GNS 530, but instead I clicked tune to nav one. I noted the course was 320 and I changed the heading bug to that particular compass heading, 320. And then I went ahead and activated the approach button, which gives me the localizer, which basically is the left and right. So it lines me up with the runway, which is this center line right here. Then I select the altitude hold button and I pressed it a second time to get the glide slope. Once I finally intercept the glide slope, the altitude hold button disappears and I can see them in approach modes, which is the localizer and the glide slope. I'm gonna go ahead and start decreasing my speed a little bit for the landing and then I'm gonna tell you a few things. So in the previous autopilot, you can simply just press approach and the glide slope button and relax and it just did it for you. With this autopilot, you have to be within 60% of the threshold. So basically you already have to be within 60% of the glide slope. And then if you were within that 60% threshold and you activate the approach button, it'll do both approach and glide slope at the same time. But if you like we were 10 nautical miles away, we we're a little bit too far away from that 60% threshold. So it only activated the localizer for us. It didn't actually do the glide slope. So not a big deal. We just have to do it manually. So again, we press the altitude hold button. Then we press it a second time to activate the glide slope. So then now, as you can see on this course deviation indicator or CDI, I'm center line and center line. So this short video is a refresh of the Cessna 172 autopilot video that I have done some time ago, which has been updated to include an STEC 55 autopilot. It is a more advanced idle pilot than the previous version, but it comes with several nuances that you have to be aware of, such as not having an autopilot button. So you have to enable or disable the autopilot by selecting a mode and also not being able to have a pitch mode like altitude hold or vertical speed unless you're already in a roll mode like heading or nav. When you're in nav mode, you can follow a VOR or NDB, which are radio, radio based navigational aids, or you can activate the GPS mode. And then when you're in GPS mode, you can press the button twice to activate GPS steering mode, which essentially ensures that you're on the right track at all times. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the autopilot using the keyboard, start slowing up my speed, and we will land this Cessna 172 into the Ottawa McDonald Cartier Airport and conclude this video as a, another inspirational and hopefully enlightening video as part of my X-Plane 11 series. And there we go. 
So I hope everyone enjoyed this video. I'm planning on making more very soon and doing some streams. Please like, comment, tell me what future videos you'd like to see, and stay tuned for my live streams. Thanks for watching.